Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Andrew Brankley and let me provide a simple answer about the common types of risk assessment tools. The last decade or so has seen a real proliferation in the number of risk assessment tools available for you to use. Not knowing how they are different could be embarrassing, if not harmful. Ugh. It would even be worse than staying at a house with small children. So you can sleep on the couch. Uh, please take the potty seat off the toilet. Don't try to pee through it. There's juice boxes in the fridge. And if you get hungry, there's plenty of goldfish in the couch. Um, feel free to watch TV with the sound off. And the kids will be down here first thing in the morning to antagonize the dogs. Oh, and everyone here has pink eye. One way they differ is in how they process information. Like this arrow that is wider at the top and narrow at the bottom, risk tools differ in degree of standardization, which essentially amounts to how many decisions were made prior to meeting with the client. We will begin at the widest point of the arrow with unstructured professional judgment. In this case, the evaluator decides what assessment targets are to be measured, how the information is collected, weighted, and summarized, and ultimately how the results are interpreted. This really isn't an assessment tool per se, as it boils down to the evaluator's assessment approach. It is inherently informal and subjective. The first opportunity for standardization results in structured professional judgment tools, or SPJs. Assessment targets are detailed prior to the assessment, often with detailed examples to help evaluators understand what they are trying to measure. An easy way to identify an SPJ tool is that they will not use numbers as response options. Instead, they'll use nominal options like present or possibly present. It is up to the evaluator to wait, summarize, and interpret the tool. With the introduction of numbers, we move into mechanical tools. And although some may find them robotic or their presentation off-putting, <laughs> they really are a huge advancement. Information is formally weighted with numbers. A popular choice is zero, not present, one, possible, and two, present. This may seem like a minor change, but it requires substantial research to do properly. The final category is empirical actuarial tools, whose key feature is that they link total scores with recidivism. Total scores, well, they can be associated with other things like percentiles or risk ratios, but to technically be categorized as empirical actuarial, test developers must connect scores with the base rate or frequency of an outcome. Empirical actuarial tools are not unique to the criminal justice system and can be found supporting serious decision-making in serious situations. Little Kato, this is serious. Yeah, I, I'm looking at you right now. I don't see anything serious. I'm telling you, I'm so super serious about how serious this is. What is it? Are we under attack? Oh, something serious is happening. Where is it? I need eyes on seriousness. It's like super omega serious. Choking a pop. Ah, I know, but it's beyond serious. I think it's over there now. What's going on? This, oh, is, this is so, so serious. serious. Although focusing on sexual recidivism, Hansen and Morton Bergon's 2009 meta-analysis is probably the best example of a comparison between the four categories of tools. Going from left to right in this hybrid table figure, we have four rows for the categories of tools. N, the sample size in the meta from K, number of studies. In the remaining space, I will show Cohen's D, an effect size which translates to the standard mean difference. So a Cohen's D of one means that recidivists typically scored one standard deviation higher on that tool than non-recidivists. Here we can see that structured and unstructured professional judgment performed about the same because the black bars, 
confidence intervals for each effect size overlap. To indicate that similarity, both diamonds are red. But keep your eye on the SPJ diamond because I needed to add some green to indicate that SPJ tools are similar to mechanical tools in accuracy. Mechanical tools did perform better than unstructured judgment, hence the non-overlapping confidence intervals and different colored diamonds. Empirical actuarial tools with over 24,000 individuals from 81 studies are similar to mechanical tools, but perform better than both kinds of professional judgment. My takeaway from this is that you should always seek to use the most standardized tool available. This will differ based upon our current understanding of the phenomena you are trying to measure. As more and more research is done, test developers can provide clearer guidance for scoring and more information about what a score means, improving both the utility and validity of your assessment results. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share it for training or teaching purposes. I'm happy for you to use the video or the slides themselves in your own presentations. I just ask you leave the slide intact and reference it accordingly. Also, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments. If you like this video, then I hope you check out my other videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel.